welcome, Mark. Congratulations. So I'll hand over to Sips to moderate from here on. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this press conference. We're going to start by taking questions from the floor. Um, Zahir, you can kick us off. How's it, Mark? Uh, well done today, and unfortunately, you didn't progress. Uh, just in terms of the overall campaign, would you, how would you rate it? Would you say it's successful? Um, well, it's not successful because he knocked out of a World Cup. So it's a bitter pill, bitter pill to swallow. Um, you know, I think we played some very good cricket throughout the campaign. Um, cricket under a lot of pressure as well after having lost our first game. Um, you know, we put in a lot of hard work in, in training. Um, our chats were good. Uh, you know, I think we beat the, the informed side in world cricket tonight in white ball cricket for a while now. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough one for the guys in the change room. Um, you know, we, we knew what we had to do today. The equation was very difficult for us to, to have to get through. Um, you know, I just said to the guys, let's try to control what we can control. And unfortunately, we can't control what other results um, are out there. Um, we did the job today. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's quite bitter. When it's fractions involved in not getting through, we, where can you highlight the fact that you, you didn't get through? Um, well, the first game, the first game was tight. Uh, we just didn't bat well enough. Um, even looking at that game, you know, it was, it was tough. We lost a toss. Um, uh, we batted first and we weren't 100% sure what a good total was because we were the first game um, to go out there and, and, and be played. So, you know, we maybe looked at one, getting 160 and we probably needed about 130, 140 to, to be competitive. So we could have maybe done better there. Um, you know, chasing a, a small total against Bangladesh, People can maybe look at that and say we, we should have gone a bit harder there, but that was the intention. We lost three wickets on a wicket that is going all over the shop. Um, so, and yeah, and unfo unfortunately, uh, ifs and buts, they don't count now. And just lastly, um, we obviously know that it, it was a, a, a young side that, that came through. What, what positives can you take from a campaign considering there's a World Cup in, in 12 months now? Yeah, a lot. I mean, this team knows that, that we're on a journey, an upward curve that, that's we're learning along the way. Um, you know, we by no means have a finished um, product. Uh, yeah, these these games would stand us in very good stead, because as I said, the, every game we played was was under pressure. So that's one thing that that we probably haven't done uh, very well in the past is is played big games, uh, pressurized games, and we really did well in them this particular competition. So yes, it's a young side. We're still developing, um, and yeah, hopefully you know we can we, we can go from strength to strength from here. Uh, take this confidence through as well. I mean, it's, it's it's not something we just arrived at a World Cup and all of a sudden, you know, start playing good cricket. We've we've won a lot of games in in the recent time, um, so we, we're heading in the right direction. Um, we just need a, a bit of a bit of good luck and a bit of fortune to go our way, and, and hopefully we can um, sort of put something in in the trophy cabinet soon. Dean. Um. It might be a bit raw, but and everyone knows the kind of rules when you come into a tournament, but are you happy that net run rate is the tool that is used in this situation? As you mentioned, you beat England, and just because your defeat was a narrow defeat, I mean, is this the way to decide how and when teams go through? I think, you know, you, you got, come to all these competitions, there, there's different rules here and there. The biggest thing for me is we knew what the rules were before. Um, and, you know, as long as there's clarity around there, then you've got to play what, what the rules are. Um, yeah, guys are, guys are chatting around. It's not only us, it's other teams as well talking about um, what a good competition is, is, is everyone plays everyone in a competition. Um, look, I'm not here to make those calls. We, I'm a coach and I've got cricketers that I've got to try and get going in the right direction. And uh, we knew what the rules were and unfortunately we, we, got, we didn't, we didn't uh, pass the test, unfortunately. And just from your experience, from what you saw out there, what do you think of England's chances going on from here you call them the inform team in world cricket do you still think that they're tournament favorites yeah look they're very dangerous um we saw i mean i think uh, two of our, our our batters who are you know who batted really well today in in Rossi and um and also in aiden uh you know they put in a good partnership and we are, even then we we're still stretched right towards the end um so I'm sure most teams around the world have got a lot of respect for, for England's white ball team. Um, they're a dangerous team. They've got some good bowling combinations as well. So, yes, uh, they're going to take some beating going forward in this competition. It's going to be interesting to watch. I mean, there are a couple of other good 
informed teams as well, and you know, Pakistan, uh, everyone's been talking about them as well. So I think those are the two teams to beat, um, you know, Australia, and uh, I'm not sure if, if, if India or New Zealand are going to go through, or if even Afghanistan are going to go through, but I think it'll still be some, some very good close cricket um, on, on wickets that are, are getting pretty tough to, to play on. So not this one tonight, but um, uh, I think uh, the, the, the two venues that, that they're going to be using are going to be um, interesting scores. We'll move on to our Zoom audience, starting with Fidoz, Ken, and then Telford. Thanks, Sips. I think you said it was it was my turn. Um, but I realize that you're obviously disappointed, but considering the expectations going in, uh, would you say that people should maybe just look at this team and, and think that they are improving and that things are getting better and it's not the kind of doom and gloom we had beforehand? Well, I've said that all along, that we, we are improving and we can look at the results. Um, you know, since we are sort of given directive that it's not just about getting games of cricket um, out there, it's about uh, results as well. And I think as before the West Indies, um, you know, the guys have really um, you know, played well and, and good cricket. So, as I said, it's, it's not something that we've just come into a bit of form um, at a World Cup. We, you know, we've been playing good cricket for quite some time. The guys, as I've said all along, they've upskilled, they've, they've been learning, learning uh, how to play different situations as well, um, and they've got a lot of confidence. So, Yes, it's a, it's a team that, as I said, is not the, not the finished product and, and hopefully we, we can you know, get behind this group of players who you know, are working really hard to try and get back to where you know, we, we should be in world cricket. Um, it doesn't happen overnight, but certainly there's a lot of effort going on uh, behind the scenes to, to get us back to, to where we believe we should be and, and can be. Ken? Hi, Mark. Uh, uh, consolations tonight. Um, when you look back one year uh, and look at where the team was back then, and, and especially in terms of the batting, um, there's another T20 World Cup in a year's time. Uh, how much do you think you guys are going to be able to take out of this tournament? And do, do you feel like if you guys improve as much as you have in the last year, uh, where will we be in the next T20 World Cup? Yeah, look, uh, you know, players players move around. Um, you know, get some new. You, we can get some new guys coming through the system, and that. So it's, it's quite difficult. A year ago, if you had a look at the makeup of this team, um, and, and you'd asked me to write write down names, uh, I probably wouldn't have had all of them. Yeah, I pr probably would have had some other names there as well. So you know, cricket is things change very quickly. Um, so. Uh, as long as the, the players around and in the system are, are willing to be challenged and, and willing to grow in their own particular games, um, then I, I do believe that, yes, we, we're heading in the right direction. Uh, we, playing in World Cups is, is always exciting, um, and I think that you know, next year's World Cup will be exciting as well. Last year, you said where we were last year, last year we weren't even playing um, cricket really. So you know, it's, it's, ju it's just good to see that we've given quite a few opportunities to, to players um, within our setup, and the depth pool is quite quite big now um, and it's nice as a coach and, and as selectors to, to be able to select different guys and give them opportunities and, and hopefully see one or two of them uh, push for, for top spots in, 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 the, in the first team. Um, it, it just stands good for, for, for everyone um, and you know, especially for the players, it, it gives some good competition um, out there as well. So I think we're in the right direction. Um, we just need to be nice and patient and keep challenging players and, and players need to keep challenging themselves. Telford, followed by Matt, and then... How's, how's it, Bach? Bad luck with uh, the way things have panned out. Um, I just wonder, when you were sitting there watching your team bat, were you thinking, why the heck haven't they batted like this earlier in the tournament? Or was it simply a case of the conditions and the funny-shaped fields and things like that tonight? I think it's condi conditions. Um, you know, we, we always go out with a plan to, to try and put pressure on bowling attacks. Um, you know, the conditions have been tough. We've... We haven't really got off to a start like that um, in, in, in quite some time in the, in the World Cup, at least. Um, we've always been losing wickets um, in the power play. So, you know, we, we set our cer certain targets that we want to try to achieve. Um, we're quite adaptable in these conditions as well. Um, but, yeah, we got, we got two guys who, who managed to, to stay at the crease and, and get a good partnership, which is something that we always try to do. Um, and we are able to bat ourselves into position where we could really put England under pressure um, at the back end, and it, it paid off tonight. So I think the conditions um, were quite good for batting tonight. The, 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 the dew had a bit of an effect on it as well. The ball seemed to fly. There was a short boundary. 
Um, so yeah, I, I think it's the guys batted really well tonight, but they obviously d they try to set themselves up for that all the time. Um, it's just been I think the conditions have been fairly tough, and if you have a look at the scores around, um, it, it showed that as well. Last two questions, Matt, and then Shobham. Matt Roller first, please. Um, hi, Mark. Um, you mentioned the partnership between Rassi and Aiden. Could you speak a little bit about those two in turn, what you feel their strengths are, and um, I guess how positive it is to have those two developing into their roles heading into next year's World Cup? Yeah, look, Aiden especially, he was a, he was a sort of opening batter, and we've, we actually made a conscious effort to, to try to get him in the middle order. Um, I think he's, he's strong enough to, to be able to clear boundary riders. Um, and, you know, it was a bit of a, a risk that we took, but, I mean, he's, he's shown that he's, he's come through in that role as well, batting at, at number four. I think both of them are very adaptable. There's certain times that we, we might have used Rassi at number five. Uh, we just felt that in order to maximize the power play uh, tonight, that we, we, we wanted him up front. So uh, he showed that, you know, he can play, play both ways. Um, so they had a very, very good partnership uh, today, um, which is always going to be good because, you know, your, your best ball strikers, if, if they can spend a lot of time at the crease uh, and put bowlers under pressure, you're always going to stand a good um, chance of, of winning a game. So, you know, I think um, the two of them, the way that they're striking the ball at the moment, uh, you know, Rassi had, had a, a fantastic 100, albeit in a, in a, a warm-up game against Pakistan, the way that he hit the ball just showed that the good form that he's in. Yeah, it was very nice for you, actually, for him to get on the park today. He... Um, he had a bit of a stiff neck this morning, so he was, uh, there was slight doubt whether he was going to play. Um, so maybe that released the pressure a bit for him as well, so he went out and, and, and really you know, just put the pressure on England. Shabam, and then we're going to finish with Zahir. Yeah. Hi, Mark. So my question is to you is that, how the system of domestic circuit of South Africa from six teams to 16 teams will give a more chance to youngsters? So how do you think it will impact direct on the national side? You're talking about a domestic system? Yeah, from six teams to 16 teams. <sighs> to be honest with you, I haven't even really thought about that. I've been so focused on, on trying to get the national team um, sort of going. So I, I think there's some some clever heads uh, back at uh, back at home who are in control of that, and they, I'm sure that those decisions must have been made um, in, or, in order for us to, to become better as, as, a, as a nation in, in the game of cricket as well. So, yeah, look, it's, I, honestly, I haven't even thought about it yet. Um, you know, I think it's still very much in its starting stages, and I'm sure time will, will tell whether it's a, a good thing or, or maybe not, not too good. I think it just needs a bit of time to, to settle, and, and let's see what the results are. Yeah. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Mark, just uh, finally, just, uh, there's obviously a, a, it didn't end the way you wanted it, but there's a lot of positives to take away from this from this tournament, and you, you have a big summer coming up with India at home. Do you think that getting home and, and, and everything that's going on home, we, the, the focus can return to the cricket and then, and South Africa can move forward as a as the Proteas on the field? I hope so. Um, it has been tough. Uh, it's been tough on this team. Um, I know that uh, we, we're finding the headlines for, for the wrong reasons and, and hopefully, you know, albeit we, we out of a World Cup, um, I think there were some, some great positives to take from this, the way that the guys played, the passion that they showed, the energy as a team. I mean, the guys have been really close, um, beyond closed doors. Um, and you can see it, just the way that they're playing out there. You know, I think Timber needs a, a pat on the back as well. He's He's been fantastic um, in, in the team environment and has really led from the front as well. So, yes, th this team is in a very good space at the moment. Um, it might not come through in media every now and again, um, but I can guarantee you right now that they are very, very strong and, and, and they're together. And, and hopefully, you know, it is reflecting on our performances um, and hopefully, you know, people can, can come and watch the guys and, and see it for themselves um, when we do get back home. Thanks very much, everyone.